Hey guys, it's Norm from Tested.com. I'm here at CES 2013. I'm here with Nate Mitchell, your VP of Product Development at Oculus Rift. You guys do VR goggles, and if you guys haven't heard about this, it's one of the coolest things I think we've seen so far Thank you. at CES. Thank so you. a lot of people don't know what Oculus Rift is. Can sure. you give me a quick overview before we dive into the technical specifics? Absolutely. So the Oculus Rift is a new virtual reality headset designed specifically for immersive gaming. Um, not like the Virtual Boy. Not like the Virtual Boy. This is uh, you know, not one of the virtual reality headsets like you might have tried in the past. Um, the feature set, you know, what we've really concentrated on is ultra-wide field of view. So when you look into the headset, all you can see is the world. You don't see a screen. Um, and furthermore, you've got really low latency head tracking, which makes for a super immersive experience. You know, when you move your head in the game, you want the world to track with you perfectly. And if you've messed with the Virtual Boy or some of the old mm -hmm. headsets out there, you know, you get that swimming feeling, you know, where it's like kind of following you, but... It's drifting away. Exactly. Yeah. With the Rift, we've really concentrated on making the latency just as minimal as possible. So it's just perfectly tracks with your head movements, which makes for a really immersive experience. So VR, and let's start with that display. Right sure. now in these prototypes you guys are developing, and you guys are releasing a dev kit. You guys yeah. are on Kickstarter. Absolutely. Um, getting that screen as close to your face as possible. So when I have something like you know Sony's, um, their, their little home theater thing, you see a small box, and they say it's like a movie theater in your room. Right, you're like this is not that. like an IMAX, right? right? This is not looking at a, a screen with a black box around it. It's in your entire field of view. Yes, yeah. The, we, uh, the field of view is roughly 110 degrees diagonally. And so, you know, you try to look at the edges of the screen and they're just not there. What you're looking at is the world. And as you turn your head left, right, all you see is the game. And that's really critical to making you feel like you're there and not, you know, sitting in the back row of an IMAX theater. Now, now, the screen actually isn't that close to your eyes. It's all done with optics, with lensing. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got two lenses in there, and they actually sort of fishbowl and distort the image and wrap it around the player. Um, but then in software, we actually correct for that. So what you see in the headset is the world all around you normally. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if you look at the screen here, actually, you can see there is distortion on the edges. Right. So um, this screen on this monitor right now is what's being rendered on that 5.6 screen. On the dev kit, it's going to be a little bigger. Right. And right now, you know, the lenses will not show the black bars around, and it, it, it distorts in game. Exactly. Okay. But when the screen is that close, when you're seeing something that big, you're going to notice a lot more detail, you're gonna notice a lot of the latency stuff. So let's talk about latency, because sure. that's something you guys announced that you have a new uh, head tracking sensor in here that's a thousand hertz refresh rate. That's right. right. And you're only rendering or displaying the games at 60 hertz locked in VSync. Right. Why do you need a thousand hertz? Well, so when we're doing head tracking, um, you know, for the original prototypes, we were using a 250 hertz uh, sensor, mm -hmm. just a sensor off the shelf readily available. What type of sensor? Is this accelerometer? It's gyroscope? an accelerometer, magnetometer, and gyroscope combination. All three. So okay. it's an it's standard nine off sensor that you would find sort of in yep. a common phone. So what we wanted to do was uh, with a thousand hertz sensor, we can actually sample data, data at a much faster rate and interpolate that data over time. So, you know, if the sensor, if you're moving your head very quickly, we're sampling data like this on 120 mm -hmm. hertz, but with, you know, a thousand hertz sensor, we're sampling four times as fast. So we're getting that much more data, which makes it for a, a it makes it a lot more accurate. And it's not just, you're not maybe using all that data on screen, but you're doing predictive movement. We're doing a lot of predictive tracking and head modeling and software. That's sort of, you know, we take all the sensor data and fuse it together in what, you know, what we call sensor fusion. Um, and then on top of that, we do head modeling and predictive tracking predictive tracking to further reduce perceived latency. Right, so in the demos that we've been getting with this, you know, you, you tell people to look around and maybe look behind you, which right. is really trippy, and you're noticing things in game that maybe game designers aren't designing for, you know, the skybox, mm -hmm. you know, little details in cartons and, and character model stuff, right. as that's gonna change how people actually have to design their games from the HUD to actually in game. Absolutely, you know, what we're finding is that designing a VR game is a lot more complicated than just taking an existing game and adding, you know, Oculus support. You really need to uh, develop the UI for VR, the scale of the levels. You know, when people drop into um, a lot of first person shooters yeah. in, it, like for example, Doom 3, people put on the headset, they try Doom 3 and they look down and they say, Man, I'm short. And you notice that in VR because suddenly you feel like you're there, right? For better or for worse, you feel like you're the player in the world. So, you know, levels, level designers don't always build levels to scale. You know, the, they may say, okay, the player is four feet tall, mm -hmm. so, you know, the doors need to be five feet tall. 
But you get in there and you feel short, so then you say, okay, I want to be taller. So we fix it, we make you five feet tall. Now you don't fit through any doorways. Right. So these are real challenges in VR to making it uh, believable for the player and really bringing that immersion level up. And not necessarily having like the HUD around the peripheral, right. having the HUD more on the center of the screen popping up, something like you know, what Dead Space does. Exactly. The more integrated sort of the, uh, the user interface or whatever you want to call the user interface is integrated with the world, the more immersive the experience. Dead Space did an incredible job of doing a user interface that, you know, even on a 2D monitor is very, doesn't, you never break immersion in Dead Space. You feel the whole time like you're there. We're going to see developers do things like that in VR to really keep their, you know, players completely immersed in the experience, not having floating boxes sort of, mm -hmm. you know, on, on different parts of the screen. So right now you have with head tracking, uh, you know, roll, which is something game, most games don't you know, have right. controls for. Absolutely. Uh, but you don't have depth. Yes. Yet. And is that something you guys are looking forward to doing? Absolutely. So we're definitely interested in uh, adding positional tracking, both for the consumer version and potentially as an add-on for the developer kit. You know, we haven't exactly sorted out how we want to do positional tracking, what's the best way for gamers and for developers. And um, to explain, positional tracking means actually moving sorry. forward. Absolutely. And not just turning your head right. between that rotational axis, right. but within that z-axis so as well. So right now we're tracking just basically orientation data like you said. We know where the, the headset starts. Started, we know where it's rotating, but if you actually see a, a computer screen in game and you want to lean down and look at it, yeah. we don't do anything right now for that. So the three sensors can accommodate that, though, right? They can in a very rough sense. Mm -hmm. You know, positional tracking is possible with sensor fused data, but it's not to the quality level that we think is uh, good enough for really right. gaming. We've seen that in, like the Razer Hydra and stuff like that, but you're looking for even more accurate. Uh, tracking. Right, absolutely. Hmm. Okay, let's go really geeky into latency. Because there's been a lot of talk in, in the VR world with Michael Abrash at Valve, and, and the, you know, there's a lot of latency considerations for right. doing VR. Walk me through where all the latency is. Sure. And, and, and going through a system, like a single player game. Sure, absolutely. So, you know, we've gotten the latency down in the head tracking to under two milliseconds, really. You know, th and that's from the data being sent from our sensor to the computer. At 1,000 hertz. At 1,000 hertz, right. Um, at that point, really, what you're doing is now rendering the frame. So you render the frame at 60 FPS, the frame rendering is going to be about 16 milliseconds. You're going to want to wait for the whole frame to render because we recommend that developers keep vSync on. Yeah. You don't want your world to be tearing, tearing as frames yeah. are rendering, right? So if you have vSync on, you're about 16 milliseconds rendering that frame. We write that to the device at another roughly 15, you know, 20 milliseconds. And then it actually takes 15 to 20 or more milliseconds for the pixels to switch in the panel. And that's and a this consideration is, that no one has thought of yet, at right. least with regular monitors. It's not important to, you know, uh, most like phone displays and tablet displays, sort of the technology that we're aligned with. Mm -hmm. they, they just don't, it doesn't matter to them. Right. But for us, this is, these are critical parts. So we, we're using a new uh, seven inch display in the developer kit. And in this display, the pixel switching time is much better, which actually reduces the overall what we call round trip latency. And not just a faster pixel switching, the way in which the pixels refresh you know, from bottom to top. Exactly. It's much, much faster. Um, and that helps with you know, a lot of people when they try uh, the 5.6 inch prototypes that we've done at PAX and, and those sorts of events, people say, there's this motion blur effect I see. When you, you move know, your head real fast. And that's yeah. the pixel switching from color to color. And no, it's not refresh rate. Exactly. Okay. And the refresh rate of this panel is the same. It's 60 hertz. We would love a panel that's 120 hertz. Mm -hmm. we'll get there over time, hopefully for the consumer version. So in aggregate, all that latency, you're targeting, you know, 30 hertz, is that acceptable well, to you? So if we had 30 to 40 milliseconds, we think that's about the sweet spot for a compelling VR experience. Obviously, the closer we get to zero, the more yeah. immersive it's going to be. Um, and that's before you add in latency from playing online. Exactly, too. exactly. So if you were cloud streaming the game or something like that, the latency could be even higher. So the more, you know, the lower the latency uh, we can get in our pipeline, the better experience it's going to be for gamers everywhere. Let's talk about this dev kit specifically, because sure. you guys did a Kickstarter and you're ready to launch this uh, next month, yeah. you know, deliver it. We, we have one coming, hopefully. Sure. And you said the big difference is this new panel. The 7-inch right. panel is still 720p, yes. but it's a faster panel. You guys aren't saying who's making the panel? And we're not disclosing. Uh, all right. And But the same optics as in the prototype. Yep. And it's... Uh, what are the differences between this developer panel? What can they do? What can developers do with this this prototype? Mm -hmm. And what will consumers be able to get? Sure. So uh, some changes from the prototype from the 5.6 inch version. Obviously, we're using uh, the new 7 inch display. Better switching time. It's a better panel overall. The only downside is you know it adds about 30 grams. So 
We're hoping we can find a lighter panel for the consumer version. We'll see how that you know mm -hmm. ends up. Um, as far as the actual software development kit, um, you know we've put together a Unity and an Unreal integration. Those will work out of the box. So if you're a developer getting uh, or Oculus Rift Developer Kit, you'll be able to boot up Unreal or Unity, load pretty much any you know level that someone else has created or that comes with the kit, and explore that in VR very, very easily. And learn about changing HUD, and you'll have best practices. Absolutely. For... We're putting together all sorts of documentation, right. wikis. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of VR research internally. That's a big part of our sort of mission statement. Um, so we want to make this as easy on developers as possible. We want the best experience for gamers for ourselves as well. You know, we're all big gamers sure. at Oculus, obviously. Um, so we're doing a lot to try and make that whole, you know, building games for VR as easy and as intuitive as possible. And then for the consumer, you guys are targeting maybe a lighter final product. Definitely. Maybe a higher resolution final product. We love a uh, 1080p display in the consumer version. You know, I can't confirm anything at this time. Okay. But uh, that's, that's one that's of your top priorities you're exploring. Yeah, definitely a top priority for us. You know, the jump from 720 to 1080p, especially um, for VR, is yeah. really critical. And because when think, it's so close to your eyes, like when I put this on, I could see the grid of pixels right. in 720p. It takes right. you a little bit out of the, the experience. But so actually, on that point, the uh, the pixel fill factor in this in, in the seven inch display that mm -hmm. we'll be shipping with the developer kits is actually better. Oh, so okay. you'll see less of that what we call the screen door effect. Even though um, the density is a, a little lower. Right. Okay. Exactly. But overall, we still are on the same page. You know, you want a 1080p panel. Yeah. You want to be in HD uh, or better HD. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get there. All right, and then moving forward, you know, you want positional tracking. Definitely. But like playing an FPS game, moving the head around is great. You, you understand the cockpit effect immediately if you're playing sure. like a mech game. Absolutely, like but, Hawking. Yeah, or, or Hawking or, or Flight Simulator. Absolutely. But when you're playing a shooter, you know, right now we have one control. You're, you're right. moving your mouse and that moves your gun, your vision, and your body turning. Yep. Right, you solve the problem with the head movement, mm -hmm. and I assume you're gonna use the mouse with aiming, mm -hmm. but then how do you do body movement? So, so what are your control schemes? Right, so we're investigating a lot of different control schemes. Um, basically, you know, even just here, uh, in, the, in the Unreal demo that we have, like you mentioned, the person's controlling um, the rotation of the model with the player's head. But uh, you can use a gamepad, you can use a mouse. We're also looking at other peripheral integration, maybe wands, you know, any, anything, gloves. We're doing a lot of different research in that area different ways for, um, you know, in VR, for players to control themselves and the things that they're interacting with in the game world. And we've seen actually a lot of developers do pretty interesting stuff with yeah. third-party technology. Valve does a lot of interesting um, research. They actually created a full portal set of levels for Portal that integrated the Razer Hydra controllers. Right. So you can imagine developers get excited uh, by the prospect of using new input devices, and we really think that virtual reality is going to warrant a new set of input devices. And so. from a, a computer perform, a performance standpoint, any, computer, any video card that can do stereoscopic 3D will work with the Oculus. Yeah, I, I think that it's a challenge for developers more than it is for uh, the hardware out there. You know, you'll want a decent um, gaming rig yeah. because you want to be running at 60 frames per second with V-Sync in stereo 3D, and that takes a decent graphics card. So it's not about having more overhead, although there'll be a little bit more overhead, it's about having higher standards. Absolutely. You know, the Oculus SDK really adds negli negligible overhead. Um, there's not really any more overhead for rendering for our device or anything like that. It's, the onus is really on game developers to optimize their engines to be running at 60 frames a second so that the uh, experience is that much more realistic and sort of immersive for gamers. Wow. It's something that's so difficult to show people and get people to understand without them putting it on. Seeing is believing with yeah. the Rift. It sounds cheesy, but it really is true. You know, people read about it. Um, we've had a lot of people call us up and say, you know, can I see it at CES? Yeah. I'm reading these ridiculous things, but they can't possibly be true. I would like to see a demo. So far, we're hoping we're delivering on a lot of that hype, you know. Uh, it's definitely challenging for us. We're tr constantly trying to improve and iterate, suck latency out of the pipeline, mm -hmm. um, but we're getting there. And it sounds like you guys are very forward-looking. So when can people buy you know, the consumer version? Sure. What is your plan for that? So we haven't announced anything yet. You know, the dev kits will be shipping in uh, March. C developers will be able to start creating content. Once the uh, software is there, we have content available for consumers to actually play with and experience. Um, and once we get the hardware a little bit better, you know, we want a 1080p display. We want to look at some of the positional tracking, things like mm -hmm. that. Once all those stars align, I think you'll see the consumer version uh, come to market relatively soon. 
All right, well, thank you so much, Nate. I hope that educates people about what Absolutely. you guys are doing, because really, you have to try this if you have an opportunity. Uh, we'll have more about the Oculus Rift on Tested.com and more from CES 2013 as well. I'm Norm, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.